Oh. Uh, intro. intro. Take two. Take, take two. Here we go. Take two. Well, hello and welcome to Sunday Night Live. And we just want to say, the boys are back in oh, yeah, town. Oh, forget. Sorry. Okay. okay. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. <laughs> 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 I think that's all good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Here um, um, we go. Oh, hey, Aiden. How are you Aiden, yeah. Also here, also present. Did you guys yeah. enjoy last week? Very much so. Mm, that's good. Let's get going. We enjoyed last week also, yeah. Definitely yeah. did. Definitely but did. the boys are back in town. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, uh, on Sunday Night Live tonight, we have got some interesting things we're going to be talking about, and we've got an inspiring testimony coming your way, as well as the final week of our generosity build-up. And for the Good Question show, we are going to speak about... Um, you. I know what we are speaking about. We are talking about one of the hottest, most contested, important topics out there in the world today going to be amazing. It has to be the topic of what happens to the other sock. I mean, yeah, come on. People have been question. wondering that forever. That is a that hot topic. For centuries, people mm -hmm. have been asking what have happens to the other sock. you got a theory on what happens to the other I sock? I do have a theory. I do have a theory. I think that there is a massive conspiracy theory around what happens to the other sock. I believe... Yes, but what is that theory? That <laughs> the theory. <laughs> I believe that the washing machine companies actually create like a secret compartment within the washing machine that collects these socks over time. And then the washing machine, you know, that when it breaks eventually, um, they kind of you kind of sell it, you, you or you give it away yeah, or whatever. And those companies take that washing machine and they find that compartment and they take out all those socks and then they resell them to kind of cripple the sense. sock industry. Um, yeah. But I also hear that some some of the washing machine companies they also own mm. sock companies. Yeah. And so the more socks that get lost, the more socks they sell. So yeah. Come yeah. on, come on. Sure. That's smart. Yeah. And apparently the mafia is also involved in some way um, yeah, because yeah. people figured this sense, out yeah. and now they're just mm. taking them out. But speaking about socks, I don't know if you've ever got frustrated like this like me, but I, I went and bought myself a new pair of new pairs of socks, mm -hmm. Falky, and I got home and it was two left socks. Both what? of them what? had the letter L on them. It's confusing. And then I took it back and I said, sorry, you sold me two left socks. I want mm -hmm. a right one. I want the right one. The right one. But anyways, and then they said, no, sorry, sir, the L isn't for left, it stands for large. For large. Ah. It's so disorienting. That is, like, I'd that never is wear that socks. I never thought you had large like feet. Two, but, yeah. but speaking yeah. about feet, like, <laughs> yeah. I got new running shoes the other day, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, very excited. Get home, can't wait to put them on, want to go for a run immediately. Put on the right shoe, fit perfectly start putting on the left shoe and apparently my left foot just doesn't want to fit into the shoe sure. so I realized they gave me the wrong size for my left shoe the left shoe was a number four and the right shoe was a number five which I actually wear and that Yo. was so frustrating yeah. yeah especially if it's like brand new shoes brand and, new yeah. can't wait to use them can't use them I've got a theory on why you received a number five and a number four sure. right. I've got a friend okay this lady uh, she was unfortunately born with a right foot that is larger than the left foot. Okay. Or I don't know if it's maybe the left, left foot that is smaller, smaller than the right foot. But, but either, either way, way no. yeah, they're not the same. All right. Which is frustrating for her. Every yes. time she goes to the shop, she has to buy two pairs of shoes. And that's Sad. quite expensive yeah. until she realized there's an easier way. So in the, in the store, she'll usually ask for both sizes. And when they're not looking and pretend like she's just fitting mm -hmm. them on, uh, she'll swap them. What? what? And then walk out with a mixed pair that fits so her. So it's her fault I got the wrong size for Probably. my left foot. Probably. Probably. I blame you, whoever you yeah. are. Yeah. If you're watching this you. and you yeah. bought some sh shoes lately, and they're what, what size were they? Five, Five and, and a four. four. Yeah. We forgive you, but don't do it again. Yes, okay. don't do it. But we've sidetracked a little bit. Yeah. So we'll get to socks a bit later on. But tonight in the Good Question Show, we're actually going to talk about this whole thing of feminism versus Christianity. That's going to be great. Sure. But what does feminism have to do with socks? It's about who's picking up the socks, you know? Uh, oh. Can men pick up socks? That good is question. a good question. That is yeah. a good question. That is a good question. Yes. I, think they should, I think they should start pulling up their socks. Ooh. Okay. Also yeah. true. No? Brilliant, Come brilliant. On. Okay. Give us a countdown. Let's yeah. get okay. to it. Let's get a, a countdown. Discussion. But while this countdown is happening, I think we should all just see what socks we're wearing. So, countdown. Right. Oh, you I've got fun socks because that's socks. who I am. So Whoa, proud of fun socks. Like, yeah. Let's see what socks we are all wearing <laughs> so that he can show you. So, yeah. well, cool, fun. My socks fun today socks. are a secret because they're Shh. secret socks. So don't tell anyone about my secret socks. Yeah. Secret socks. And yours? And yours? 
I don't know. I've got like normal You're socks. You're boring uh, today. Old man socks. Bubbles boring today. He's got old man socks. Old, old man, man socks. socks. Do you know what? The, do you know what? Classy. This, this socks. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so Brent, what do you think about feminism? Feminism. Don't worry, I got my shots three weeks ago. It's just a scratchy throat. <laughs> it's no big thing. No, it's, it's not. It's not like the flu. It's not an illness. Is it though? Is <laughs> it? <laughs> Yeah, no, like feminism versus Christianity. Uh, like, like, is feminism Christian? That's a good question. Let's talk about that. Where'd they come from? This is the good question show. Just tell me what I wanna know. The good question show. Well, hello there and welcome to the Good Question Show. I'm Brent, this is not Brent, as well as not Obel and Obel. <laughs> oh, welcome, Obel. How are you doing? Yes. Doing good, yes. doing good. Yeah. I feel like there's something between us. Uh, I don't know how you feel about we, that, but yeah. We are between you, <laughs> literally. What are you doing here? Well, we're talking about feminism and Christianity today. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about feminism, it's kind of helpful to have females present. That's why we are here. Uh, so help otherwise, you in the discussion. Otherwise we have no credibility. Yes. No credibility. Yeah, and it makes we'll sense, just make yeah. jokes the whole day. But yeah, I, I do want to say thank you for joining us. And I see you've also dressed the part. You got <laughs> the did. memo. Yeah, we did. Come on, Brent. <laughs> not a part of your system. Or Brent did not get the memo. <laughs> no, he did not get the memo. Oh, he got the memo. <laughs> He's just rebelling. I'm just rebelling. Yeah. I work I mean, with teenagers, yeah. so I mean, come on. But it's one thing not wearing a blue shirt, but I mean, not wearing like a proper shirt. That's like didn't a t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I dressed up, I came in my nice <laughs> shoes and everything. And your point is? No. Oh, yeah, you so just, you're back to topic, no gentlemen. Here <laughs> oh, we that's go. Why this here, is yeah. why we are here to help you. <laughs> to back help to topic. Us, yeah. Feminism <laughs> Exhibit and Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we said for the topic feminism versus Christianity. Yes. Um, but let's start off by just and uh, explain to us what is feminism. But it's before you question. do, can I just say, I do know what feminism is. <laughs> I'm just I, sure I'm just, you do. I, I don't want to be the guy in 2020 that's like, what's feminism? I've never heard of never it. Never heard though. of this. So I, well, I think maybe to start off the conversation, I think like any political movement, any social movement or whatever, it's always good to go and look where did this thing start? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are anti-feminism, but they don't necessarily know what they are saying no to. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are pro-feminism, also not necessarily being fully aware of what they say yes to. So if you go way back in the day, and I mean, I'm talking 1800s, early 1900s, which Natasha is also going to touch on, uh, feminism was actually the direct result of a very broken society. Mm. I mean, if we, if we look at history, women were treated appallingly at yeah. certain yeah. points in mm. history. They were treated unfairly. They had zero rights. Um, women weren't allowed to vote. They weren't mm. allowed to legally own property. Second class citizens. Yeah. Second class yeah. citizens and through females, and yeah. through. Males were top of the mm. kind of pile. Women were way at the bottom, treated mm. horrendously. Yeah. And then feminism was born because feminism advocated equality and women's rights, mm. even amongst the sexes, male and female. And that yeah. in, in itself is a really good thing. That's mm. actually a biblical thing, standing up for the oppressed, you know, standing up mm. against injustice. Mm. And that's where feminism was actually born. Women were treated as second class citizens. Mm. They decided, I'm going to start standing up against this. I'm yes. going to fight for equality. So if you want to put like a one liner to it, feminism would equal the advocacy of women's equality and rights amongst the sexes. Okay. Yeah, because if it's sure. about um, yeah, fairness and equality, Quality. Yes. I think yeah. in, in terms of that definition, then I'll be willing to say that's I'm a feminist. Christian. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. Yeah. We that's can Christian. get on board with that. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then where, where does feminism then become unchristian? Okay, good so question. I think to begin would say uh, almost an analogy of what Aiden just explained would be the idea that in the past it was almost like women um, were at the bottom of the food chain, men mm. at the top, mm. yes. and men dominating women. Mm. And then the first... Uh, idea of feminism that started in the 19 in 1948 actually the women sort of um, sort of leveled the playing field they mm. came this idea of but we are equal and we deserve equal opportunities you yes. know economically as well so mm. even actually in the beginning there was a, a meeting and the men were present at that first meeting in 1948 mm. and then currently right now what we see is almost this militant left-wing idea of feminism that mm. are sort of trying to 
topple what's happening right now to have women dominating over men, almost mm -hmm. creating this idea that uh, women can do better, women can be better than men, almost an idea of a substitute man, mm -hmm. so to put it. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, is what would be versus the idea of Christianity or the picture mm -hmm. that God has painted um, yeah. for so, us. So, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the problem with this kind of unhealthy strain of feminism is that it has the potential to no longer really focus on equality amongst men and women, mm -hmm. but it's rather become like this battle of the sexes, yeah. kind yeah. of like, like who's... Anti, anti -male yes, anti-male or yeah. anti-female, yes. you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's unhealthy like you feminism. you have to pick a side. <laughs> yes, you have to pick a side. And it's mm -hmm. no longer really about the equality of men and women with yeah. each other. Yeah. Now now it's this thing of, but women are better. They deserve better. They should do mm. better. And mm. men are not kind of like the, the bottom of the food chain. Yes. And that's unhealthy feminism where it pits men and women against each other. Yeah. yeah and, and I think generally people are pretty confused uh, these days on, on if you're a woman, what does it mean to be a woman? And uh, yes. as a guy, what does it yeah. mean to be a man? Like yeah. men don't know how to be men and women don't know how to be women it's uh, confusing. anymore. Yeah. It's, it's confusing. Mm. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think that when we look at it, um, to see what the Bible actually says about mm. this, um, it's, it's a very important thing to see because now we see men um, in the one side. You know, men are different to women. Uh, let's be honest. That I mean, true. myself and Aiden. <laughs> very Aiden, different. Aiden's way different to what mm. I am. Um, you she know, wore she's, the right shirt, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she, she listens to you and wears the right shirt, I didn't. I do um, listen to you. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. Um, but, you, you know, it's just different spaces that we are in. And, and here's the thing. God never created us to clash against one another mm. and he never created us mm. to be separate from one another but he actually mm. created us to be with one another and work together mm. and I think that is a beautiful picture when you see a, a man on his own that is a, a lost world I mean you can ask all oh, men in a single Imagine there were only men in the world in the world <laughs> this place would be ruined yeah. Um, yeah. it would, it would literally be ruined <laughs> yeah. and um, in the same way if there were just women in this world it would have probably been better than the men left it I would say but yeah. um, the, it would be still not it would great. be still not great Still chaotic, mm. so. But when you put these two worlds together, something beautiful happens. I think that's why God mm. always wants men and women to work in unity mm. and that they're always for one another and with one another. Mm. Um, and when that starts happening, that's when we start seeing, um, you know, a, a world change and yes. the environment community change. Yes. Mm. But the challenge is, is this, that we've been focused so much on what the differences are and that we put the mm. value in the differences yes. and not in the sure. person. And that's mm. the crazy thing is, you know what, if, if a man's stronger than a woman physically, then you know he's the better one yeah. or if a woman's yeah. smarter he, he, than the guy they, therefore he can decide who to vote for but a woman can't exactly <laughs> yeah, like, and if a woman is smarter you. than the guy then therefore she is the better one yeah. and the thing mm. is now you're taking the differences and playing their value on that yes. and not actually the way that God looks at us and says you know what man and woman male, female it does not yeah. matter mm. you have mm. the same value in mm. my hands yeah. the in my heart in, the in my eyes yeah. mm. um, but the differences is what makes it beautiful that's when those two differences start filling one another in mm. um, when we start um, taking the scale and kind of leveling it out where my weakness is her strength yeah. and her strength is my weakness yeah. mm. um, and that's when we start doing amazing things yeah. so God created us to be put together yeah. and not to clash against one another mm. yeah. and not to live without one another mm. I think that is also a scary yeah. place if we if we separate these two mm. worlds um, they need to be together yeah, yeah. if either, either well it's, I think in feminism you would get this idea of well I don't need a man mm. yeah yeah. Like yeah. That, that, yes. um, that idea. And, uh, well I done. Think, I think there might be some truth to that. Um, but uh, in reality, if we look at the Bible, uh, God looked at Adam and he says, no, this guy needs a woman. Yeah. Yes. And the same goes for women. Um, so the Bible doesn't put yeah. men, women apart and it doesn't yes. put them against each other, but with each other and for each yeah. other, yes. for one another. Especially but when equal in value, like yeah. you really need someone. So nah. e e equal in value, yes. mm. but still different. Yeah. 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 Yes. Same, 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 but, but different. different. Same, same, <laughs> but different. But still yes. same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very but good, different. yeah. Yeah, so, but let's maybe take a break and yes. play a game. Yes. And this game is called Can He Do It? <laughs> because there's a reason why feminism started. Because in certain things, men believed they can't do it or they don't have yeah. to do or it. Or women yeah. ought to do it. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. So we're going to play a little game. And they, they, I suppose we can play the same game, can yes. she do it? Can she do can it? She do yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Let's, Let's play the game. Answer. And now for our game, we are calling this game, Can He Do It? Mm. And the reason is we found this cool 
poster. Yeah. Last week we had on the little table that we usually have in the Good Question mm. show when the ladies were yes. um, presenting, we had the feminism poster which yes. says... We can do it. We can do it, yeah. yes. And then I found this cool one that says, he can do it. <laughs> and that's why we're playing a game, he can he do it? And so we're going right. to ask the ladies, you can ask the guys two questions and then we're going to ask the girls two questions on can she do it. Right. Okay. So... So Any question you want to ask? Yes, yeah, so typical, you, you know, gender stereotypes. I'll kick us off. For the men, can he wash the dishes? Please. Ooh, that's a Ooh, controversial one. Controversial <laughs> one. Uh, um, yes, he can definitely Shop. wash the dishes. He can do it. Um, there we go. He can do he it. Can, he can do it. He mm. can do it. But when did washing dishes become a, like a thing that women are supposed a to do? A gender role. You know, a gender role. Why, why is it that? Isn't it something yeah. that we should all just know how to do? It's a life question. It's, a life it's, not, like, it's not like men Questions. don't eat. They yeah. also eat. It's, yeah, it's like if we're dishes. saying to like change a light bulb, I mean, men and women should be able to do that. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's like, yeah. do you want to see or not? Yeah. <laughs> I think the scary thing is that we grew up like that. I think when mm. we're seeing my mom washing dishes, you'd think, you know, you have to, it's the mom that washes the dishes. It's a feminine role. Mm. Um, but it's not actually that. It's, it's a role for all of us. So can you wash the dishes? Yes, definitely. Yes. Hallelujah. Good stuff. Good. All right, second question. I see there's a baby there. Yes. And I think everybody's going to be so happy. Can he help with the baby? You. He can. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> I, not me. And yet. I do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. I heard a guy once say that, I mean, it's actually quite unfair if a guy says he's not going to change the nappies. Yeah. Because, I mean, this poor lady had the discomfort and all the nausea in, in the beginning of mm. carrying the baby, mm. sure. then childbirth. Which is bad, which apparently I hurts <laughs> Yeah, yeah mm. apparently. Apparently. Apparently it's, it's discomforting. Kind of, <laughs> apparently it's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a discomfort. <laughs> and then the guy has the audacity to say, oh no, gross, I don't want to change nappies. Oh. Uh, I've got a friend and, and he once actually said that no, he just told his wife like he feels he wants to vomit like if he sees poo. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but do you, do you hear what you're saying? Is you're saying that what if that's the way she feels? Uh, mm. Like it's like then no, what must happen? I, you know, I just it's it's too mm. gross for me to yeah. handle yeah. poo. She likes poo. But then she she probably She'll knows probably how to do. handle poo. Yeah. I mean, wh wh why is handling poo a gender role? That makes no sense. Yes. So definitely, guys need to step up, stop playing with your little computer games, and change the next Xbox. Yeah. But change the net. Change it's just aimed at someone in the room. That's right? cool. Some <laughs> stereotypes broken right there. Definitely. That's awesome. He can do it. He can do it. Yeah. He can yeah. definitely So do maybe it. a question for the ladies. Uh -huh. Can um, she do it? Can she do it? <laughs> so maybe first question is this. Can she um, pursue a career? Can she pursue a career? Yes. Absolutely. But I think if you ask the question on can she pursue a career, you need to ask kind of two additional questions. Like if you're asking a woman a question is never that simple. Yeah. You have to like True. add subheadings to True. everything. So we have the mailbox. So yes. can, can she pursue a career? Yes, absolutely. Mm. And we'll get to that in a minute. But then you also need to ask the additional questions. Can she be a homemaker? And even the question of can she do both at mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. time? Sure. And I think I would definitely want to refer our viewers to last week's episode, definitely, because good we... Good we, we did speak about, you know, women's roles as a homemaker versus yeah. a career woman. Yeah. Can she do both? Absolutely. Because the point is, it doesn't matter if you're a homemaker or a career woman. It yeah. will never define your value. Yes. Your value is firstly so defined good. in That's God, good. your maker. Yes. And if we look at certain biblical references, um, they refer to both. The yes. typical Proverbs, you know, 31 women that's mm -hmm. written about in the Old <laughs> Testament. Yeah. That woman was in business. It was yes. referring yes. to a woman in business. Yeah. If we that's consider good. Acts, you know, Priscilla and Aquila, you know, the, the women in the household, she was actually a very successful businesswoman. Sure. But there are also a whole bunch of references about, you know, women being mothers, women being caretakers. So can she pursue a career? Yes. yes. Can on. she be a homemaker? Yes. Yeah. Can she do both at the same time? And I think especially in our society today, because yeah. that's what society today yeah. would ask of women mm. to kind of do both. Yes, absolutely. Because your worth is not found in your role. Yeah. Yeah, and it's something that each woman can sort of decide and figure out for herself. There's yes. nothing yes. unbiblical on, you know, yes. It doesn't make you any less of a yeah. woman yeah. if you are a homemaker roles. or a career woman. Yeah. Go Another girl. question. Hallelujah. Go girl. <laughs> can she change the tire? You can she. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just want to say I can. Okay. Oh, no. so yeah. She have can. You, have you yeah. changed yeah. the tire before? It's, it's, she I, can I've over here. in changing a tire. Help so you can't I, I know. I know what needs to happen. But okay. can you though? I'm sure. <laughs> yes, strong she yeah. can. No, really, to answer the question, <laughs> Aiden has already answered the question. Yes, she can. Okay. 
but she doesn't have to if she has the privilege of having a man there to do it for her. Yes. Yeah, that's a good, good answer. answer. Yeah. That's a very so good it's one. okay for a girl to allow a guy to change the tire yes. and he get his hands to and can yeah. I just say that's her privilege. Yes. Yeah. But it's good. Can I just can. say no, something okay. for a guy? It's really nice because you feel like the, yeah. the superior in that moment. It's it's, yeah. it's kind of nice. Just and you tell are. us like you yeah. are kind of cool. You know, yes. just, it feels good. You're like you as a man. You're like ha ha. You know, yeah. I helped yeah. out. Yeah. Then you feel good. So. I think it's almost the same as opening the door as well. It doesn't make you any less of a woman or any more of a woman because you're opening open your own, own door. Yeah, like you know? yes, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> you know, let yeah. the guy yeah. open the door. Once that doesn't mean you are a weak woman. Yes, if a guy changes the tie for you or opens the door. Mm. And I think it's the same thing with, with guys, like because like changing a nappy. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you are weak when you change a nappy. In yes. fact, if you're not willing to change a nappy, you are weak. <laughs> yes. Like you are Tell really them, not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyways, I get Preach it. Tell them, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <a> nappy obsession <laughs> over here. He can do it. He can, he do, can it. Okay. do it. And she can do it. She can do it as she well. Yes. Okay. okay. That was Let's a fun continue game. with that was a fun game. Yes. Mm. So who won? I think it was us. We all. <laughs> I'm joking. That's actually the whole point. It wasn't yeah. trick question. Yeah. It was no, a trick question. That's the whole point. That, that it's not a competition. Oops. Yeah. Oopsie. I didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like Brent and the clothes. Let's get back to our Everyone's conversation. Everyone's dressed in blue one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> back to the conversation. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've figured out that there are certain things that guys can do that were considered to be female roles, and there are certain things that girls can do that used to be considered as male roles. Uh, so we are more the same than what we are different. I think that's mm. important to understand. Yes. We, men and women were both created in the image of God. Mm. We are more the same than what we are different. But the Bible does seem to uh, explain mm. that there is difference. Yes. Why is that important? The question is important because the left wing strain, the militant strain of feminism mm. speaks about equality equals sameness. And it's important to draw the line in which the Bible speaks about equality due to our differences. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And okay. I just think maybe to latch on that, I mean, obviously, because when we look at the Bible and we as Christians believe that God created women with certain strengths mm. that men do not have, but they need. Yeah. And on the flip side as well, God created men with certain strengths that women do not have, but we need. So mm. the problem is if we have a male dominated society, it will be a weaker society because, because then it's missing because it's missing out on the, the strengths yes, that women right. can bring and again on the flip side mm. if we have a female dominated society it will also be a weaker society because then we are missing out on the the strengths that men can bring yeah. and i think that's why it's so important that we say we are fighting for equality but it's because we are different because we have different strengths we need to work together mm. like god intended you so it's equality because we are different, because yeah. then we will actually have a stronger mm. society and, very importantly, a stronger family structure. Mm. You know, sure. if mom and dad is present, it's a stronger mm. family yeah. structure in society. Yeah. Mm. I think that's a beautiful picture of, mm. uh, I think, if I think about my kids. Yes. Uh, there are certain things that they get from my wife more than what they get from me, and yes. there are certain things they get from me more than what they get from her. Mm. Sure. And that's why they love having both of us present in their lives. Um, and so in the same way, in society, mm. you can make the argument yes. that if, for instance, we've got a justice system mm. um, or a, a corporate world yeah. where there are only men, we are missing out on some of those strengths. So, yes. so and I get what you're saying is that, that you know, so the argument for equality because of sameness doesn't mm. make sense. No, no it doesn't. Doesn't. Um, doesn't make sense biblically or even no. scientifically. But no, then, logically even. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make but, sense. But equality because of difference, yeah. Yeah. that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. That's very good. And I think it's very important also that um, I think one argument uh, that also goes around is this idea that gender is only a social construct. Mm. Mm. In other words, that the girls are girls because we raised them to be girls. We gave them a doll to play with and not a car. Yeah. And that boys are boys because we raised them to be boys because we gave them a car. And there's lots of you know new science on that and actually evidence saying, well, that's not really the case. Gender yes. is not necessarily a social construct. Yes. Um, and just like men and women are different mm. at a biological level, mm. yeah. why can they not be different at even other levels? Yeah. But it doesn't it doesn't take away from you know equality. Yes. Um, so two things can be true at the same time. Doesn't make anyone lesser. No. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. still. Uh, because different. equality is not synonymous with sameness. 
That's very important. Yeah. yeah, that's very good. Yeah, yeah, another thing when it comes to equality, it's actually shocking that we are trying to fight for equality, um, because mm. if we look at men and women, if we play in the roles that you know we are created to be in, um, that is when we will find equality. Mm. If men, you know, are not uh, if overly, men were real men, <laughs> no, if men were real men, this would not be an issue. Yeah. Mm. I mean, if yes. men weren't passive, if men weren't insecure, they wouldn't be over dominant. Mm. And the thing mm. about that is, yeah. is that when we start men start actually living their life not passivity but actually you know proactively taking responsibility for things for their family mm. for the people around them sure. that is going to create a space where women can actually live out their lives mm. yes. um, in the way that God wanted them to be mm, so good. when these two roles start playing out in a right place mm. um, that is when we actually start seeing that equality is not actually the aim it just it's a birth it's like the natural mm. thing to it's come out fruit. of this it's the fruit yeah. of us yeah. so um, it started with men and men just need to stop being passive um, yeah. and stop you know just sitting around and actually start taking yeah. responsibility of their own lives and the lives of people yeah. around them yeah. and I love what you say also um, mm. it's because of men being insecure yeah, um, because I think if I think about my wife I, I think she's a very strong woman mm. and I will limit her in terms of her potential of, of how God created sure. her yeah. if I'm insecure yeah. if I try and compete with her mm. yeah. um, it's uh, you know that, that would be that would put a lid on her yeah. but if I'm secure and who God, God made me mm. to be then in that environment she will be allowed to flourish um, sure. and so that's yeah. I think what you're basically saying is the the, yeah. the cause of feminism is men yes. <laughs> that because that, men that's were insecure maybe to end off maybe I can ask uh, the ladies uh, some some last thoughts just on this statement men are trash <laughs> sure. are men trash <laughs> men. men are trash because we, we did. We just you know, spent smelly. feminism on men. Yes. So. So we all smelly, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if I can just take the opportunity and maybe speak to all the ladies out there, I would like to answer this question in the following way: that yes, some men are trash. Mm-hmm. But listen very closely, ladies. If you are looking for a man near the dumpster bins, <laughs> you will find trash. Come on, men. So I would rather want to encourage all the ladies watching that you need to be looking for a God-fearing, Bible-reading, community-loving, Christ-centered man right here at mm. church. Mm. Yes. That Stop is looking true. in the dumpsters. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> and if you find that man, he will give you the space to be the woman that you were created to be. Yes. Because yes. you know who you are. You know the purpose that God has given you. So if mm. you find a man secure in himself, knowing the road that he's taking... Mm. And you go with that man, you're going where God is leading you. Mm. And you'll be allowed to flourish the space that you need, the nourishing space for you, Mm. once you find that man. But as long as you're in the company of trash, you will (laughs) have to fight for equality. (laughs) True. You are in the the company of trash, you will Mm. always have to fight for your rights, your empowerment. Because you're not trash. Don't don't go looking (laughs) for him at the pub. Don't do that. Find him in the church. Find him at church. Absolutely. Very good, yeah. Again, awesome. hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for saving us on this episode <laughs> and giving us uh, and educating us. <laughs> it was good. Us it was so good. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go wash all the dishes off this. Oh, it's a pleasure. Cheers. Blue. Okay. <laughs> much love. Sorry, Brent. <laughs>
and he was my last hope. So I was chilling in the workshop that day um, uh, and we got a breakdown um, in, on one of the farms. I will not forget, I climbed out of the bucket at the farm and um, with my crutches and a lady also with crutches approaches me and she told me that um, she had been expecting me and that God uh, told her that um, told her that uh, I was coming and um, I must, she must give me a letter. At first I thought it was a coincidence, but it was the content of the letter that struck me. Um, it's a very common verse, it's Psalm 23, and um, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. And um, basically the message um, was saying that if a shepherd um, in, the, in those days saw that the um, that the sheep were sick and falling behind from the others, he would break its leg and carry um, the sheep on his back until it's, until it's completely healed. Um, so, yeah, um, because of my knee, I could really feel God speaking directly to me. And, um, yeah, um, and I got this beautiful picture in my head of God just um, carrying me on his back, um, laying me down on green pastures and um, at flowing water just to strengthen me and um, to walk with the rest again. And one thing I will never forget are the last words on the letter um, that said, um, yeah, God is, um, you are going to experience God in the places um, you least expect Him. Uh, and from that day, my life changed forever. And I just want to encourage you guys to see God and, um, yeah, and you will find Him. How many, how many of you did this as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, you wanna get mugged? <laughs> <laughs> you think this is our like deer's walk? <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Yeah. No wonder they're frustrated, like how do they text? Yeah. <laughs> no thumbs. Um You think people still notice this thing? Yeah. Is this a man baby? I was say means it's just man lady, man lady, lady. So dear hop. <laughs> A lot of you don't know this, but those vans and that VW at the back is actual size, it's just really far away. <laughs> <laughs> it's an optic illusion. And we've now come to our generosity moment and uh, over the past five weeks or so we've been telling you about the generosity fund and we've been giving you some feedback each week on what the generosity fund funds uh, wonderful projects in the city that's to the benefit of the city of bloemfontein a uh, ministry that we're doing outside of the walls uh, of uh, our church and uh, we want to invite you tonight to become a part of this generosity fund by signing a debit order form um, and by giving a monthly amount uh, to the generosity fund starting in December until 2021 in November and so what we've worked out and what we are actually trusting God for to see all of the things that, that he has put in our heart to see it happen next year we are trusting God for 1.3 million Rand that sounds a lot that's, right? that's, that's a good amount of money it is a lot of money 1.3 million Rand but we made a quick calculation and what we saw with the amount of people that we actually have in church if we can only get 310 people who give 350 rand a month, we've got 1.3 million rand Yo. over 12 months. Are you sure about that calculation? Yes. I'm gonna just, just one moment. You can continue. You wanna double, you wanna you wanna double check, check the calculation. Just sort check. of missing the point. Uh, but the reality is that for you, the 350 rand might look different. For each person, the 350 rand looks different. Uh, if you're already a working person, maybe you've got your own business, you might be able to afford or to sacrifice a bigger amount each month. And maybe for a student, uh, the 350 rand for you is maybe only 50 rand, um, or if you are still young. And uh, I've been so encouraged. So in just maybe, just to say, yeah? it can either be 350 rand that you know, people give, but you actually made the calculation wrong. It's not 310 people. It's 309.52381 people. Um, so we sense. just need a person that is... Uh, we need 309 people person. plus a 0.52381 yeah. person, person to yeah. give 350 So if you're out there and you're a 5.0.5238 uh, <laughs> person, 
missing the point. We'd like okay. to help. Thank you for your math. I'm just, I'll, okay. I'll continue. Just continue playing with that, yeah. But I've been so encouraged over the years to actually see uh, students. And I want to encourage you also, if you are a student, don't think uh, that you've got too little to, get, to give. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for you to also be a part of it, even if it's giving a small amount, something like a 50 Rand a month. Uh, something else to also take note of, if you are, own your own business or, or you can deduct from tax, that the generosity fund is Article 18A, so it's tax deductible. Um, so if you do give into this fund, you can always deduct it at the end of the year uh, from tax. Another thing, just quickly, Obel. Yeah. Um, you know that we said 350 people. Um, yeah. Or th 310 350 people giving 350 rand. Yeah. You know we can do actually 350 people giving 310 rand. So if you don't have 350 rand, just get another buddy, and then we have more people. Then it's easier. Okay. I'm just just putting it on. Uh, please take note. So if you want to sign up for this, you can find a link to the debit order um, in the description below, and in the. Uh, the debit order you'll see there is a space where you have to put in the date we want to ask you to put in the date from december 2020 and uh, that ends again in november 2021 that's very important and if you do struggle with the online form you're also welcome to contact us and we can email you the debit order form that you can fill out or you can come into the office and get a hard copy mm. another one just quickly i've been working out some i just want to help our people uh, is that maybe you have more money and just lying around you know and uh, you want to just give more. So if we worked out if 155 people each give 700 rand. Okay, you're uh, missing the point. Okay. No, but it'll work. You, okay. Yeah. yeah. But the point's not so much that each person should give the same. I mean, it looks different yeah, for yeah. everyone. We're giving yeah. options. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got it. You got another calculation there for me. Uh, well, maybe you have a lot of money and you want to give 700 rand like that, and you just need 150 people. Or, and here's the the like loophole I would say is, if we get what if you want to get to 1.3 million. Rand, it's really yes. easy, it's to do this, to get 1.3 million people <laughs> to give one rand. I mean, come on. One rand could save a life. That also makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. But that's actually wrong, sorry. Sorry about that. That's actually wrong because it's not, we, we're looking for monthly payments. Monthly. So it's Your actually 1.3 rand, uh, 1.3 million rand times 12 months. Times 12. How much money will we have then? Yeah, but then, then you have to put like a money. debit order for like 15 cents every month. Yeah, which doesn't make sense. If it's 1.3 no. million people. Okay. You're not real good at math, are you? No, I'm not. I had maths later at school. I'm really good with word sums, though. Okay. Yeah. Like, have you heard that word sum? Um, you know, Sarah's got 15 chocolates and she eats 12. What does she have? Diabetes. She's got diabetes. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay. She definitely has diabetes. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me, let me just quickly finish this. Okay, so it'll be great. Yeah. So, uh, the reason why we are asking you to sign a debit order form and to do a monthly commitment is because a part of this generosity fund actually funds uh, some of our school workers and our youth workers' salaries. And so, we want to be able to budget each month um, and to know in advance. And that's why we will just feel a lot safer um, with some of these people that are actually getting salaries if we've got a set budget before beforehand and also if we work with monthly uh, payments so yeah youth workers get their salary from this thing yes please help us yeah that includes you yeah mm -hmm. you're making That's... it awkward if you're making it too personal oh, yeah. Sorry, i think bad. we should maybe yeah it's step off this and go to the announcements definitely, definitely. okay so announcement announcement sir brent i think you're making it awkward it shouldn't be awkward speaking about money but you're making it extremely awkward. It's what I do. Yeah. It's what I do. So let's rather go to the announcements. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's, let's go to. To me, the announcement. Tomorrow, tomorrow, the announcement, the announcement guy. guy. Person. Hello, family. These are your week's announcements. I hope that you really enjoyed our morning service this morning in terms of our drive in church celebration. Um, Central, we haven't forgotten about you. On the 13th of September, you have your drive in church at your campus. You can register below. And then on the 16th of September at Fichat Park campus, we are having a worship and prophetic evening. So don't forget to register for that too. And if you'd like to give to this church, there are three ways you can do so EFT, Zappa, or Pay Fast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next week.